Spring here with a book review wrap up. Um, yeah, book reviewing lately has been messy, so you're going to get three books in this video. These reviews are going to be super short and brief, and it's just my general thoughts and opinions. You're allowed to disagree with me. Whoa. So, first up, I read Light at the Bottom of the World by London Shah. This is first in a duology. Uh, this is set in the nearest future where the world has succumbed to the waters and we all live under the sea, as it were, under the sea, um, yeah, um, but of course things are never quite as straightforward as that, it turns out our government is lying, oh, when, when are they not, and uh, there's a, like, conspiracy going on, and it's really actually very, very cool, um, th um, this was published, now when was this published, let me find out, uh, back in 2019, so just before the pandemic, um, but there's a lot of things that happen in here, particularly with regards to the politics and the government's behaviour, that actually is very reminiscent of what's been going on with our own governments lately, uh, with regards to the pandemic and what we're told and what we're not told. So a lot of this felt really, really relevant, uh, even though I suppose it wasn't supposed to be quite as relevant as it felt it was. Um, I love the main character, um, Layla. She is fantastic, she's headstrong, she's determined, she's got these hopes and dreams, but she's also fiercely loyal and protective of her father and her family and her friends. She can race around in submersibles. She's a really, really cool submersible driver, so think a little bit like, um, not Top Gun. Yeah, okay, Top Gun, but in the water. <laughs> um... And it basically means she wins a prize. No, I'm not doing any of that because that's the spoiler. But she's, she drives some mess balls for fun and is really, really good at it. She's kind of like a racer. Um, but she ends up getting entangled in this like government conspiracy that's going on. And she flees London and finds out the world is much, much bigger than she thought it is. Um, there is a sequel to this called Journey to the Heart of the Abyss. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's that one. Yes. Um, so I need to pick that up so I can finish this duology. But I'm really kind of excited to like read a proper science fiction, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea kind of story with political intrigue and these really cool characters. Um, Layla is so much fun to follow and she's got such a wicked sense of humour. And yeah, I really, really like this actually. So. It's not been, as far as I'm aware, published in the UK, so I actually ordered this from Blackwell's with my Christmas voucher. Thank you much, boss. Um, so I don't quite know UK people, Amazon or Blackwell's, to get your hands on this, but this is a book that I think actually should get a lot more love than it is. It's really, really enjoyable. I then read Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This was part of my staff book club. This was one of the books that we could read. The other one was Thursday Murder Club. So I read this one uh, because I really liked Certain Dark Things, which is down here. Uh, I really liked Sylvia, um, Sylvia's writing style and the way that she describes everything. And this is, you know, another one beautifully written, really, really interesting. And then gets shit dark at about page 90. This gets out of nowhere, like really dark dark and like whoa what the hell um this is set in 1950s mexico and it's kind of like vampires with a twist um and it's it's really it's kind of enjoyable and you can see where it's going and once that it hits that darkness it's like ooh, it suddenly turns into this whole different like story going on but I don't know, there's, there's something i missing. I didn't feel like the setting was quite as relevant as it was for certain dark things. I think this could have been set anywhere else. Um, you know, Naomi is, she's headstrong. She's a 1950s girl who's just out wanting to live her own life and be her own thing. So she's obviously clashing against the sort of the, the traditionalism of this family that she goes to see and then you understand really why they're that way they are there's some talk about eugenics and purism um which is 
kind of uncomfortable, but the way it's handled, because Naomi's like, what, what you want about? So you've got that element to it a little bit. And then there's this like whole vampirism in it, which is really like odd and proper hammer creepy. It's, it's really kind of disturbing. <laughs> so yeah, if you want something that's just like, ooh, in places, um, you're probably really, really going to enjoy this. But I did like her writing style. I liked the way the story unfolded. Her characters were pretty solid, which was nice. Um, and it's got a lot of those tropes that you would expect from a proper Western-centric vampire story. So I think that's that's what kind of let it down for me, that it didn't feel like it was set in Mexico, that it could have been set anywhere else because of the isolation and the story. And I was kind of hoping for a bit more of, inf you know, Mexican influence in the story. And it wasn't kind of there, which was a shame. But I will be picking up another one of Sylvia's books because I just like her writing style. It's really odd and beautiful and poetic. Recommend it, but not for the faint of heart. And then, because I've been really struggling to finish a book lately, I've picked up Skullface bookseller Honda San. This is volume one in the series. Uh, this basically follows Honda San, who is a bookseller in a Japanese comic book store and it tells the tales of their encounters with the general public and working within the comic book store industry. This is just so much fun. A lot of this is hugely relatable. There's some stuff here that I've seen when I've been in a bookshop. There's stuff that I've experienced as a, a seller um, in a comic book shop when I was at university. So a lot of this is really sort of relatable to me. But actually the amount of information that's in here, because Honda-san is in a um a manga section so you learn about all the different mangas and the different rules of manga and the different publications of manga so there's loads of information in this that actually i didn't know which was kind of cool to discover and it was a great little pick me up i read this over the course of the day i needed a book to finish because i really really struggled to finish something lately and I've got three books on the go. <laughs> I was doing really badly at finishing something. So I wanted a book I could finish and I really enjoyed this and I might have to go back and get book two because this is so much fun. <laughs> so yeah, so if you fancy a manga that's set in the comic book shop and it's just like offbeat, weird, but really, really down to earth, this is the one for you. So that's what I've managed to finish over the course of ooh, four weeks, I think. Uh, yeah, which is really bad of me. Um, let me know what you finished down below, what you're currently reading. You can check out my Goodreads and, and my Storygraph and see how many books I have on the go at the moment, which is embarrassing. Um, yeah, let me know your favourite books. Have you read any of those three? And if not, is there anything there you're going to have a go at reading yourself? Uh, as always, use my guffins in the description box down below. You can find all my social media, my book blog, which is terribly neglected, and I do apologise. And booktubers that I think you should go and check out, because we're all here to support each other. As always, thank you very much for watching, and happy reading. Be well.